In this first course, we're focusing on getting an understanding of all the pre-designed stuff. Things as basic as what these machines are and how they work, as well as how to measure things and what materials to use. You will also need a fairly complete understanding of how to put things together. So we'll also be going over things like hardware and adhesives, as well as some basic joinery. Really basic stuff to get you making and later some more complex stuff thrown in to get you thinking. This first session, we will be looking at different kinds of machines and what can be done with them. But before we get started, this course is about digital fabrication. Let's discuss what that actually means practically. Digital fabrication, as I teach it, is designing via computer and using a series of computer controlled machines to make stuff. On paper, it's really that simple. Learn how to draw on a computer, find a machine to make it for you, that's a bit deceiving. Though you may not have to spend years learning joinery or machining, you'll still need to know how to put things together. In fact, I would say that the process that may have been once very difficult and time consuming, now just becomes very tedious. Unlike learning a trade though, the learning curve for digital fabrication is a lot less steep. And as you will soon find out, it's actually pretty easy. Because a stream of open source DIY and Kickstarter based machines show up online at a constant rate, it's really hard to decide what exactly the next big thing will be or what will be obsolete to teach. So let's stick with the ones that I use and that have been around for a while. Now, whatever flavor of a machine is doing the work, a vinyl cutter, a laser cutter, plasma torch, water jet, even a 3D printer, they all work in a similar way. They alter material based on your instructions to make parts. Though you might not realize it, most of you are already doing some sort of digital fabrication on a daily basis. Almost all these machines and software for that matter kind of mimic your computer's printer. If you think of these machines as an inkjet printer with different heads on them, you can easily grasp the concepts behind the machines. So let's take a look at your printer. What we have is an inkjet head that moves left and right across your material your paper. Your paper moves forward and sometimes backwards, and the inkjet spits out some ink as it moves up and down. The left to right we will call your plus and minus x, or axis 1. The paper movement is your plus and minus y, or axis 2. And the inkjet head is your plus z, or minus z. We'll call it axis 3. So based on this, your inkjet printer is a three-axis ink-spitting CNC machine and besides different heads, it's the same as a giant industrial laser cutter. Not a huge concept to wrap your head around, and the print drivers do most of the work, right? Now, the big cutting machines don't run on print drivers, though. They have their own language called G-code. We call it GoCode. And it works kind of like your print drivers. It tells the motors when to move and where to move to. The big difference is that some machines have a laser head on them and not an inkjet. But this is basically the same thing. Now the good news is, just like your printer, you don't need to write the code for the printer. Software does that for you. Though all these machines have different processes and may be used for different purposes, they all come from the same roots. A desire for complexity beyond what a person could accomplish, and most importantly, with repeatability and speed. So let's talk about those first CNC machines. Now, they are designed to fix complex helicopter blades because eventually aerodynamic design surpassed what a person could do. But there was a problem. The way the machines were programmed back then were little punch cards. And because these movements took a lot of punch cards, there had to be a CNC machine invented that could make the punch cards in order for the CNC machine to actually make the blades to make the punch cards to make the blades to make the punch cards. You know, technology is a beautiful thing, but it all costs money. The machines to drive the machines cost millions in today's dollars. So why are we learning about these things now? Well, they became cheap and very accessible. So you should, of course, learn them. Cost no longer the obstacle. So why don't these machines cost millions anymore? We can thank a very generous open source world and cheaper, more accessible parts. This equipment may still not be affordable to be in anyone's little studio, but it's fully accessible to us through the myriad of specialty maker companies. There are companies such as Shapeways, Pinoco, iMaterialize, and people who just have one in the garage. 
They've made it as easy as a few clicks to get our stuff made. Just as an exercise, check out the site 100,000 Garages just to see what's in your area, possibly next door, who knows? Maybe your dad has one. Plus, if you put your energy towards it, you could always just make your own. It used to be you need to study a trade to get enough knowledge and experience to build even one part of something. And with time as it is, you really needed to focus on one thing or one material. Well, we need much more than one tool and one material, and we need to be able to learn to master it much more quickly. Ah, who's got time for this, you say? Luckily these days, you just need one thing, a computer. Still not easy to master, but much more robust and no risk of losing a finger. Plus, there are tons of readily available YouTube tutorials and courses, just like this one. Wink.